in today's world, this is the sort of beautiful scene we associate with romantic fiction. But out there in the North Sea, hundreds of oil wells are pumping up the lifeblood of our civilization. And with them comes the ever present threat of pollution. The Torrey Canyon, the Exxon Valdez, the prestige. It doesn't bear to think what such a disaster would do to this beach. But most of the North Sea oil doesn't come ashore in tankers, it comes ashore in pipelines. So we don't have to worry about shipwrecks. Unless, of course, the wreck lands on the pipeline. Imagine this is a pipeline lying unprotected on the seabed. A falling wreck would simply crush it. More likely, trawlers' nets or anchors could snag it. So how do we protect it? By burying it. If we can create a trench so the pipe can sink into the seabed, we can cover it up and all is well. Quite simple with soft sand and a piece of plastic tubing. Not so easy when the pipe is 500 metres below the surface of the sea and it's one and a half metres in diameter. For that, you need the biggest plough the world has ever seen. And this is it, the AMP 500, all 180 tonnes of it, which is about to be moved from this shed on Tyneside to start earning its living burying pipelines under the North Sea. But before it disappears beneath the waves, let's take a look at how it works. Imagine the pipeline lying on the sea bed. The whole plough is then lowered above it from its huge towing vehicle on the surface and then these grabs, one at the front and one at the rear, slowly scoop underneath the pipeline. They then lift it up very gently and allow these rollers to swing underneath and cradle the entire pipeline. The whole device then moves slowly forwards whilst behind me the ploughing begins. With the pipeline raised into the belly of the plough, the two halves swing together to allow those cutting tips to start digging the trench. Then as the whole device moves forward, the pipeline is gently lowered into the trench behind it. The spoil from the trench is pushed aside by these massive mould boards, made extra wide to push the spoil sufficiently clear of the trench to allow the plough to come back for a second run and these skids to still be running on a flat seabed. The whole operation is controlled from this cabin which sits on the deck of the towing vessel. The pilot sits here with these screens giving him all sorts of information about what the plough is doing underneath the waves below. It's a sophisticated operation with sensors all over the machinery, sonar looking both ahead and behind the plough and TV cameras showing him what's going on below, as long as the sediment doesn't obscure his view. All that control information is carried to and from the plough by this umbilical cord, which is paid out from this huge drum as the plough slowly sinks to the seabed. It also carries 450 kilowatts of electrical power to operate all the rams and pumps. Up here you get an idea of the complexity of the whole operation. With all these hydraulic pipes, electrical wiring and control valves, essential to keep the plough in the right place and ensure it doesn't damage the pipeline. And that's quite a trick when this device may be sitting 500 metres below you on the seabed, being towed by a powerful vessel one and a half kilometres ahead. Now, the oil and gas pipelines may be large in diameter, but they're still very vulnerable to damage. So the plough must feel its way along the pipe. Now, you can't steer the plough from the ship hundreds of metres ahead. So these rollers are fitted with sensors, which tell the pilot how much load is going onto each of them, allowing him to keep the plough centred on the pipe. Even the ship is wandering from side to side, way up on the surface above. Now, what sort of numbers are we talking? 
Well, the plough on dry land weighs 180 tonnes, which effectively becomes 160 when it's submerged in water. But that's still too heavy for some of the softer seabeds, so buoyancy tanks are added to reduce that to just 60. But then, picking up the heaviest of pipelines can add a 150 tonne load, so the skids and plough must be designed to support over 200 tonnes. Which is why, even with the help of this little caterpillar track, you need a 28,000 horsepower ship to tow it. But there is one small problem. Before this plough can do any ploughing, it's got to be shifted to a quayside over half a mile away. And for that, you need a specialist in handling big loads.
Yeah. Okay, good. All that's our points track is performing at the moment in what we call passive mode so it's, it's more or less acting as a wheel on the back of the plough free wheeling um, and that's matching the plough speed very well so shortly we'll be giving the track some more work to do um, we'll be driving it and see and watching the tow force and um, predicting the tow force will come down and we followed the pipe handling sequence as though there was a pipe on the seabed so as far as we were concerned there was a pipe there uh, the ROV um, was sent into its correct stations to observe the loading. The plough was set up uh, with the cradles and the pipe grabs and, uh, and as much care was taken over loading an invisible pipe as it would be a real one. 